Hi all, I'm extremely excited to be joining UXDX Amsterdam remotely today from my home office here in Amsterdam. My name is Nani Udalova and I'm the Product Design Manager at GitLab. GitLab is the world's largest all-remote company. We are 100% remote with no company-owned offices anywhere on the planet. We have over 1,200 team members in 67 countries today. And my room is the place where I often work from before COVID-19 and of course during it. Often I would be trying to go to co-working spaces to spend my working hours from there. This helps me to add a little bit of creativity and fun to my day. In case you never heard of GitLab before, GitLab is a complete open source DevOps platform. We help engineering, security and operation teams to build and deploy their software, all the way from writing the man and managing their code to deploying and monitoring it. We are used by more than 100,000 organizations around the globe, and we're extremely proud of that. In my team management experience of five years, I have gone through both type, types of uh, management, in-person and remote uh, team management. Today, I would like to talk to you about what are the difference between the two and what does it mean to be a leader for a co-located versus a fully remote team? And also share a few things that remote leadership has taught me. So if you're switching from managing a co-located team to leading a full remote one, you may be wondering, do I need to shift some of my attitudes and behaviors? What do I need to do as a remote leader to make sure that my team is same successful as uh, in, in remote environment as when we were co-located? And when I first posed myself with those questions, I really needed to take a few moments to think about the differences. Are there any differences actually? And I realized that people leaders, despite the type of the team that they're leading, in general need to master the same types of skills, types of, types of skills. Honesty, great communication, accountability, decision-making, delegation, empowerment, etc. In my presentation today, I will be using some data from Know Your Team uh, software. This is a great place for managers to go and search information around how to become a better leader. Check out some of the research that they're doing um, around the remote management and in-person in management as well. So Know Your Team have uh, run a study with almost 300 remote managers and employees to learn about the remote management and its difference from the in-person management. What they found was that most of people who work in both remote and co-located environments found those two only to be moderately different. 59% of um, people said that. So here's my question. Are those leaders who work in in-person team um, a world apart from the remote team managers? And my answer here would be no. However, there are certain things that remote leaders need to deliberately focus on. And there are some things that you cannot uh, survive as a remote manager without doing those. These days, there is tons of information about how to transform to remote work and make the best out of it, of course, due to the COVID-19 situation. So I will not spend too much time on giving tips around this topic uh, during today's talk. If you want to find more details, feel free to go and read my article about the lessons on the remote management following this button that I added to the video. So if, if we would be in the co-located environment um, having this talk today, I would be asking you about the biggest difference on your opinion between managing a remote team versus managing an in-person team. I'm curious, what would you say? Actually, I think many of you would have answered it correctly. It is, of course, communication. 30% of surveyed managers by knowyourteam.com said how people communicate with each other on the team is the biggest difference between remote and in-person team management. And it is also one of the top three biggest challenges to overcome. For most managers who are used to operate in co-located teams, it can be really hard to adopt to other ways of communication from what they're used to. In a co-located office, for example, when you have a question, your instinct is to go and talk to, to someone about it and definitely not to write it out. 
when you have a new project to kick off, you would hold an in-person meeting. However, in the remote teams, you cannot do that. You cannot have in-person meetings or, you know, just walking to somebody's desk to talk about this. You need to write it out. But how do you write efficiently? And how should you use Slack? Do you, should you use all, it all the time? How quickly your colleagues should respond to your messages? And how would you communicate something less concrete, like values and team mission? And what about when you need to deliver some tough message or hard news to your team? According to the um, survey that I mentioned earlier, communication effective, communicating effectively without in-person cues is the second hardest part of the remote manager's job. 15% of remote managers said this. Number one challenge though, seemed to be building trust and report uh, across the team. It is what managers should prioritize and something that new managers most frequently overlook. 33% of remote managers said this, by the way. And managing individual performance while not being in person is the third most popular response as the hardest part of the remote manager's job. 8% of remote managers um, answer this. So what can help us here and how do we deal with that at GitLab? Of course, tools come to help. And in its core, remote communication is around documentation, calls, videos, and chats. It's about delivering a message or series of messages in a way that does not necessarily require the recipients to be available at the same time. In some cases, even to be awake at the same time when talking about uh, different, different time zones. If your organization has no standardized methods of documentation, you have to establish that first. Otherwise, your team will be left to determine their own ways uh, to communicate and they will create a lot of textual noise that's really hard to figure out. A common frustration in a large organization is the chaotic splintering of communication. So projects frequently end up being spread across emails, chats, text messages, unrecorded meetings, Google Docs, etc. At GitLab, we have only one destination where all the product-related information is stored in, and this is GitLab as the product. We store all feature requirements, epic information, milestone goals, all is there in the GitLab as a product. For business conversation, team check-ins um, and other calls, we use video conferencing like soft, uh, software like Zoom. We always record those meetings for those who cannot be present so they can be watching the meetings after the fact and not missing anything out. Any conversation that occurs in the meeting is documented at the same time using the Google Docs agenda. It is really fun to see all of the team members that are in the meeting taking notes of the conversation that's happening during the meeting directly. It's really funny. You can see all of these colorful cursors with people names and everyone in the call is accountable for taking the notes. Also, team um, and one-on-one -on -one conversations are happening in Slack. We have lots of channels for that. And again, if there is anything useful that was mentioned there, we always port it back to the GitLab as the single source of truth. And if those conversations last for too long in Slack, we usually just dive in, uh, deep, uh, jump into the call. For team cohesiveness, building trust and having fun purposes, we use video calls as it helps to make it more personal and fun. There is some other tools that we use in GitLab here on the screen, so feel free to go over those. But what are some of the lessons that remote management have taught me personally? And how do I learn to overcome those three previously mentioned challenges for the remote managers? Here are a couple of lessons that I would like to share with you today. The first lesson is practicing empathy. S since you have switched to the remote work during the pandemic. Have you ever found yourself in a place when you have sent a message to a colleague or your direct report and after some time of not getting any response, you started to get worried? And if you're a manager, you would be thinking, is your direct report even working? Is he or she taking a nap, playing games? Why are they not responding? During all remote work, it is uh, so important to not allow yourself to go wild around those thoughts and teach yourself to practice empathy. Make sure, uh, m maybe your colleague is uh, working on something important and does not want to be distracted at this moment and uh, they will come back to you later. 
maybe they have gone to a shop during due to buy some lunch for the family and will be taking uh, time to finish uh, the work um, after the hours so with the remote way of working that's totally fine and that's okay right our hours have shifted and the working days have, have become has become more flexible so one of one way to overcome those thoughts for you as a remote manager is to create as many opportunities to get those in-person cues with your team video calls and meetings are ideal for this as they give you the closest fidelity to in person so instead of writing a long email to your colleague, ask if they can hop on um, on a quick video chat. It is also important before jumping directly to the business talk, ask your team, how are you doing? How is your family? How are you handling the all remote work? These questions may give you so much insights into why your report may be not reaching out um, re immediately or not reacting to your uh, questions directly and will put you in the place of a human and empathetic leader more. In a remote type of working, it's really hard to get people um, to, to read people right. And it's very easy to make these wrong assumptions about how somebody is feeling. If somebody's message comes uh, across as too short to you, assume positive intent. Maybe they've been quickly switching between emails or maybe they meant to add a smiley at the end and simply forgot. So always clarify, seek for understanding and try to make sure that you and the other person are on the same page. As the manager, you also have to pitch this attitude to other people on your team. My second lesson is focusing on tracking the output and not the time. In collocated companies, managers are used to track the time by watching when employees would enter the office until the time they would leave it. Or walking behind somebody's back and checking is what are they looking at the moment, at the web shop or at the work application. All remote collaboration would will force you to drop this well-learned habits and pay attention to something more valuable instead, like team output. You have to ask yourself questions like, are your teams team meeting? Is your team meeting the goals that you have post, uh, posted for them? How those goals those goals are being set? Is everyone contributing? Is anyone quiet or does anyone need help? Time applied does not equal it is not equal to the progress that your team is making it's it's so important not to conflate the two as a remote manager you have to kill this nagging voice inside your head that asks is my team working what are they doing right now you can never answer that question truly even when you are in person when you are collocated so why bother in the remote environment Instead of becoming consumed by this paranoia, you have to remind yourself to focus on your team results. And the path to that is creating the best environment for your people to achieve those results. My lesson number three is measuring results and productivity. So similar to what we discussed just now, tracking your team productiveness by walking aside their screen to see how busy they appear at the moment will not work with the, allocation, with the remote allocation of people. Uh, not to say that this is ever a right way to measure your report's performance. At GitLab, we use KPIs and OKRs for tracking the team's output against the goals that we have set. So uh, key performance indicators, KPIs, are a set of quantifiable measures that uh, a company uses to track the performance over time. This is a super nice way to track company productivity and, the, and KPIs also can apply to projects, programs, products and variety of initiatives. Something that's better applied to measuring uh, personal performance are uh, objectives um, and key results. And those are defined as a metric that outlines a company and team objectives, objectives that's an O in OKRs, along with, a, along with the measurable key results, that's the KR in the OKR. And those key results, they define the achievement of each objective. OKRs represent aggressive goals and they determine the measurable steps that you and your team need to take towards achieving those goals that you have set. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about those two, read this amazing book, Measure What Matters by John Doerr, um, and you will learn a lot about how Google, Bona, and the Gates Foundation use OKRs to rock the world. Uh, here is the button um, to the book on the Amazon. 
My lesson number four is building strong connection with the team. And this is probably the hardest thing to do with a full remote team. But in order, in order to build trust and work efficiently together, you need to make sure that you know each other. And this takes time and effort. It is much easier to do this within physical location, as you can always meet for a drink after the work and share some personal news. For remote managers, it's very, very important to do this. Take some time to get your uh, team, to get uh, everyone on your team and um, have those one-on-ones and try having those not only around the work check-ins, but also about something personal. And some people can be more restrictive to discussing the, their personal lives, but you need to sort of uh, try and see where those boundaries for each of the uh, person uh, is. Dedicate some time to schedule some uh, social fun meetings for your team uh, as the ways to get together and talk about their hobbies, playing games, discussing favorite animals, uh, whatever uh, they will find the best. In GitLab, we have those fun sessions scheduled um, often and they're reoccurring. Additionally, remote managers will need to invest uh, some time and uh, money in doing some sort of personal in-person team meetups. At GitLab, we do this every year and we meet with the whole company in one loca location to spend some time and to get to know each other. There is no work usually happening in this time. We are purely fo focusing on the personal connection here. Here is an example of a group social call at GitLab where we had a hot dog theme. And this was a great way for uh, our remote teams to get uh, connected and bond with each other. So my lesson number five is about effective uh, collaboration. When uh, not having all your team around, you will unconsciously leave people out of some discussions and decisions. So proper documentation is very critical here to ensure that everyone is on the same page. We have talked about this topic earlier, but I'm just reinforcing this message again here. By uh, documenting this essential conversation, you're making sure that no one is left out. Therefore, you have to practice documenting each meeting, decision, ritual, uh, and allowing people to have access to this information. Uh, here are some few important points to pay specific attention to. Uh, make sure that all of your documents are open for edits by default and shared via cloud, so no local stuff, because this will not allow your team to get access to that. Make sure that content is e easily searchable, use clear document titles, tags, etc. Spend some time on setting up proper information architecture, so prepare and provide an example for folder structure and proper file naming. In GitLab, we post announcements about the new documents being added to the company chat or we announce them during the call to make sure that people are uh, going and making themselves familiar with the new added information. And we always default to over communication. If you don't say or explicitly communicate something as a remote manager, your team has absolutely no idea what are you thinking and what are you planning. My last lesson, but definitely not the least important, is delivering feedback right away. There is never a better, better timing for feedback than right now or directly when the situation have happened. With the remote way of working, it's so easy to get carried away with the other work and never come back to um, discussing the situation and sharing the feedback again. Make sure that you reach out to your team member directly and do a small debrief to agree on improvements. I also suggest inviting your team to participate in 360 feedback reviews. At GitLab, we do those every 6 to 12 months. And this is a great way to ask manager, peers and possible reporting staff to provide feedback around how they see your work, how do they see your soft skills and where you can improve. Whew, I know it was a lot of information and probably not everything was so new to you, but let me summarize a couple of important takes away, takeaways here that I want you to remember. Good remote managers are not far away from those good in-person managers. Great leaders do the same things, but remote leaders need to focus on some things a little bit uh, more closely. Good remote leaders are great, are great in communication and they possess writing as a tool. Try to um, assume greater positive intent in communication and look to establish more empathy in the absence of in-person cues. 
Focus on your team output. Don't track your team's time behind the laptop as a way to measure the productivity. It's a bad way. Trust your team. You have hired them as professionals, so give them the opportunity to showcase it. Be more intentional about how your team members are connecting with one another and how you're connecting with them. And deliver bad news and feedback right away. This will help you. So remote work have made me a better leader. I truly believe so and have taught me a lot of good lessons around it. I hope that my today's story will help you too. I will leave you with some good resources about the remote manage, uh, management and leadership. Uh, some of them I mentioned during today's presentation. But also feel free to connect with me on social media and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Thank you.